Hi, this is Dr. Hughes, superintendent here at Frontier Central School, and I decided to make a screencast video because we've had some uh, interesting rumors going around about class sizes for next year. And uh, some of them even said that our class sizes are going to be 25, 30, and 30, even up to 35 um, at our elementary schools. And, and I just want to get the information out there so you can see that's clearly not the case. Um, so let's let's dive into this a little bit, and this will be a short video to help you with those some of those questions. Um, our guidelines that the board establishes that hasn't been established for quite a while, well before I got here, um, has been that class size maximum will be 22, um, as close as we can get in grades kindergarten through second, 24 in third through sixth, and 28 in seventh through twelve. And so let's look at the most recent data. Um, results, especially for our kindergarten, uh, excuse me, especially for our elementary classes. So this is the data from the end of March. Um, so we have students come in and out, and um, some buildings will go up during certain times, and some will go down. And, but if you look at these numbers, there isn't any that are that are truly over 22. We have a couple blips here and there, which we can uh, go through in K2, uh, especially Blaisdell, uh, Cloverbank, and some other pieces. But if we highlight the ones that are of most note, you can see that Blaisdell um, does have, did have a kidding earned or does have a kidding earned slightly over uh, 22, but also has two grade levels well under 17. Uh, Clover Bank has a kindergarten sections that are averaging 17, but second grade sections are averaging a little over 22. Pioneer's has those at 23. But in kindergarten, or under 18. So one thing that we look at is when do we make these decisions on what, how many sections to have, those kind of pieces. Well, we're going to wait until August 1st to do so. Because sometimes we get students that come in, we get late registrations, we get students that leave us. Because even in Clover Bank and Pinehurst, even Blaisdell, if it was possible to switch a second grade section with a first grade section or vice versa, those classes in kindergarten and second grade could have been balanced out and would have all been under 22 versus some being a little bigger and some being 17 or even below. Uh, so those are the kind of things we look, we're look we looking at going forward. And as you can see, um, even at the third to fourth grade level, there aren't any classes over 24, which is the guideline. And if we move ahead, let's see where we look at compared to school districts around us. So there's a few schools we consider similar to us based on demographics, based on size, um, income and wealth and things like that. So, you know, Clarence, East Aurora, Hamburg, Lancaster, Orchard Park, and Sweet Home are the ones most similar to us. And looking at those, Frontier is right in the middle, with East Aurora close to 24 students. Now, this data is from 2017 and before, but it shows you how consistent our class sizes have been. Orchard Park's gone up, and then they went down. Ours have been relatively, been very consistent around 20, between 20 and 21 the entire time. East Aurora went up and uh, has has gone up since then as well. Um, so our, our numbers are in a pretty good space. But you say maybe that's just because you picked the school districts that uh, that you wanted to pick. Well, let's look at all the schools in Erie County. As you can see, the average is 20.8 right down here. And there's the gray line that shows that. And if you take Frontier and we go across, we happen to be the exact average of all the school districts in Erie County. Uh, Chief DeWaga Maryvale, up near 24. Again, this was a 2017. Um, the lowest being North County, the Iroquois, Lakeshore, um, Cleve Hill, some of the smaller schools. Um, it's very difficult to, to balance class sizes in smaller schools. Uh, because you have a lot, you have a number of students leave, but they're spread out across grade levels. It's a little more difficult to do so. And we also have that because we have four elementary schools. So we do have smaller buildings. It makes it sometimes difficult to balance those out. Okay. So we're, we're right at the average of all, all of Erie County. Um, if we look at 1920, though, the one thing here that we do not know is incoming kindergarten. We know how many packets we've sent out. We know so far how many have come back. But that's why we'd like to wait till August 1st to make final decisions on these where applicable. Um, if you look, K2, there is not one class size in, on average um, or overall that will be 
more than 22 students. So that idea that we're going to have 25, 30, 35 kids in the class, just not true. Uh, even if you look at third through fifth, in parentheses right here is the guide, the board guidelines that we operate by. And there is not one class um, or average even that is above that. So this also gives you an idea of what our enrollment looks like. Now these numbers could change and go up and down. And as they do so, we will take into effect and, and add class sizes. One thing we're able to do this year um, that some people have mentioned is um, put in some new math specialists. So those are being targeted to Big Tree, Tree and Blaisdell right now. We have three Title I schools, Big Tree, Blaisdell, and Clover Bank. But we've had a number of retirements this year. And by using those retirements and repurposing them, so that's where you may think we're cutting sections, but in reality, we're going to repurpose those positions. And in some of those positions are going to be math specialists. Now, if we get an influx of, say, you know, a bunch of kindergarten kids or, or those kind of pieces, um, Clover Bank and Pinehurst has that ability to that if we don't get the numbers um, that we're currently expecting, that position could become a math specialist, working with all of our teachers and uh, our students to, to push in and really uh, drive our math math results. So we're looking to finalize our kindergarten enrollment and all the enrollments by August 1st that will help out. Now, when you do look at class sizes, one thing to consider, this is one teacher to all the students in this class. This does include if our teachers are team teaching, this does not include special education teachers. This does not include specialist teachers, whether it's reading, speech, all those kind of pieces. And it doesn't include aides. So if you include those, we'd be, we'd be well uh, on our way to uh, getting close to single digits. But that's not what we do. We just focus on the classroom teacher. So we're not going to make our class sizes large and, at all. And uh, hopefully these numbers help just prove that. So one, per, one question I received from a couple of different people is, what if we added a teacher to each grade level and building? We'd love to do it. We'd love to do that. But it comes down to what would we take away? So the, the cost of adding, you know, we got four buildings. You got six grade levels when you get to K-5. So that equals 24 teachers. The health and benefits for a new teacher is about 75000 So multiply the number of new teachers we have to hire by the cost of a new teacher, we're talking $1.8 million. The state increased our foundation aid this year 201000 or 0.88%, while many other districts got much higher. Um, Frontier as a whole is $4 million less in foundation aid than what we're supposed to receive. If we had that extra $4 million, we could add a teacher at every grade level. We could have um, more specials in the in the elementary schools. We could have a lot of other other things that other districts that are wealthier and other places, especially downstate, have access to. Um, but we don't have that capability. So as we have retirements, um, I prefer uh, greatly to not lose any jobs. Um, but if somebody retires or leaves our school district, um, how can we best use that position? Um, and is that position or that, that that piece needed compared to the vision of the school district? You know, in future years, we hope to add more STEAM uh, possibilities, more accelerated. Um, our Many of our standards leaders and, and buildings and, and principals are working on those kind of ideas, ideas that have been shared in thought exchange and in conversations. Um, but in the end, we only have so much funding that we can use, and it's how best can we use that funding. Um, it, if it was easy to generate revenue, uh, we would do so, but um, the revenue comes from our tax base, and our taxpayers are unbelievably supportive of what we do, um, have voted consistently to, to support the schools uh, for years and years. Um, we want to keep that going and uh, not tax our, overtax our taxpayers, so we've got to balance that. But this video really was to help um, explain some of those pieces out there, those rumors about class sizes being huge, uh, and it's just not true. As a father, uh, not just the superintendent, but as a father in the district of a young family, um, I totally understand that concern. Um, if I take my superintendent hat off and just want to advocate as a dad, I don't want large class sizes either. It's that simple. We're, we're clearly not going to be doing that. But if you have any questions, concerns, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, we prefer to get the information out there that makes sense. And, 
and um, hopefully we'll have an early spring and uh, the nice weather will be here for the long term. Have a good one.